What is this great conversation you're about to hear? Hello everyone, this is W, host of the High Art on the Edge page. I'm an online event planner that supports artists' work from all over the world. They create the product. I help organize and execute a memorable event on social media for their fans, family members, and friends. In addition, I host surprise events where online friends and I examine an artist's work. Sometimes we're able to get special guests to join us and share a few tales of their own. It's a rockin' good time. What do Camera Obscura, Jesus and Mary Chain, and Simple Minds all have in common? They come from the great place of Glasgow, Scotland. Let's not forget about an incredibly talented band, Teenage Fan Club. This phenomenal alternative indie rock band has released infectious music since 1989. You may be familiar with memorable tunes such as Star Sign, Don't Look Back, and Start Again. In this entertaining conversation, you will get to listen to TFC enthusiasts John Conley, Katie Haley, and myself discuss our endless appreciation for the band's work. We talk about moving lyrics, quotes, concert experiences, and even pick seven songs that directly tie into our big essential question, how does Teenage Fan Club music flow and provide such warm energy? You will hear us chit-chat about albums such as Catholic Education, Bandwagoness, Shadows, Howdy, and many more. So, grab yourself a drink, have a seat, sit back, and enjoy our discussion as we shine a big and cheery spotlight on the power pop indie darlings Teenage Fan Club. They really have designed so many memorable hooks and melodies to their overall sound. Winning Formula Concepts. Hello everyone, this is W, host of the High Art on the Edge page. Welcome to another edition of Surprise Event. This is number 19, and we've got a dandy for you today, Tuesday, November 14th. We're going to shine a beautiful spotlight on a band from Glasgow, Scotland. Of course, we're talking about the power pop indie alternative majesties of Teenage Fan Club. But I'm not going to do this discussion all by myself. I brought in some special guests here in the Bay Area or just outside the Bay Area. Uh, we have John Conley, Katie Haley uh, joining me in this discussion. And yeah, thanks for having us. I'm doing well. Cheers to both of you. <laughs> and uh, before Cheers. we launch into our uh, Everything Flows <laughs> conversation, can you just give us a little background on what you do as an artist? And John, we're going to start with you and then Katie. Go ahead, John. Well, uh, musically, I'm the singer and guitarist for the band Desario, based here in Sacramento, California. Uh, I used to be in a band with uh, my sister, actually two bands with my sister, uh, Holiday Flyer back in the early 90s and California Oranges uh, through the 2000s. Um, I'm also uh, a graphic designer, um, do a lot of, uh, music design work, design work for <laughs> my band, obviously, Desario, for Katie's band, Soft Science. I've worked with Luna, um, Luna, Dean Wareham, <clears throat> uh, Lavender Blush from the Bay Area, Bye Bye Blackbirds. About me. Uh, Thank you. Katie, <laughs> what about you? Oh, yes, I am. John's sister or John is my brother, depending on how you look at. So, um, and we were, as John said, in all those things together. <laughs> so we, uh, and uh, currently I am the singer for, uh, the lead singer for Soft Science. And then in my, right. uh, I don't, I don't have a, another additional uh, thing. That's So amazing. music obviously connects us together. And um, I can clearly remember when this band, Teenage Fan Club, uh, entered my life. Before I share that narrative, I want to hear from you, John. When did Teenage Fan Club, that power pop, grungy, alternative sound, uh, really grab hold of you? 
Uh, well, I first, I first heard about them when A Catholic Education came out. My friend Jason Ellis, who uh, he's, he well still he still does turns me on to a lot of music. But at the time, he he had picked up that album, and remember we we listened we listened to it a few times together with our group of friends, and and we and we liked and we liked it. Um, but I don't remember it really like I don't remember that album really kind of grabbing us. Uh, I remember when Bandwagon S came out and uh, I remember people being really excited and it, and it getting a lot of buzz right when it came out. I remember I remember being into that record a lot, but I really they, I, I really didn't really start loving Teenage Fan Club until Grand Prix. That that was the album that made me that, that made me love Teenage Fan Club. I remember my, a friend of mine worked at a music uh, for a music distributor and he brought home a, a promo copy of that record and it was kind of sitting in a stack of cds that he that he had we, we were roommates i remember like looking oh i didn't know this was coming out i popped it in and i was just i was immediately hooked yeah katie what's your story well um actually i have to like most cool bands in in my life um they were first introduced by to me by john <laughs> So um, I greatly appreciate uh, my brother for um, for influencing me and my musical taste so much. Um, and so, but I remember um, I remember like watching 120 minutes and seeing mm -hmm. videos. And I think I I remember hearing about Catholic education. I had the same um, kind of reaction as John. I um, and I, I really loved Van Wagenesque. I really like, I really love, I still love the song, the concept. Um, there's a few songs on that, on Van Wagon S that still really resonate with me. But I have to say that um, I'm very similar to John about Grand Prix. And uh, that album basically lived in my car for years. Like that mm -hmm. album just did not leave my car. Uh, I was going to yeah, yeah, you, John, you, you tell you tell the story. We have you got a good you, you, you can tell the story. I'll, I will let you since, since you're well, It was a rainy night in uh, in Sacramento, <laughs> but we actually John <laughs> fill in John fill in the gaps. Okay, um, so. we um, there was a local radio station and they were having a Christmas like or like holiday of. Uh, it was quad 106 and they would have these like uh, a party acoustic, or acoustic, acoustic Christmas. Christmas and they had oh, yeah, yeah. the most incredible lineup. Teenage fan club was on it as well as cowboy junkies, Matthew sweet. I can't remember who else was on it. John wonder stuff. Wonder stuff. Forget wonder oh, stuff. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, do we win tickets? Do we call in and win tickets? Yeah, we won tickets in, in the <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, so we won tickets. And then it was terribly, it was like pouring out. And John and I were were, were, were quite young. And, but we were, uh, my my parent, our parents were like, you're not going out in this. It's really, it's too rainy. You guys aren't going out in this. And we're like, no, sorry. Uh, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> Cause we're like, we are not, not going to the show. So John and I went to the show and it was amazing because they're just like, and hardly anybody was there. It was just like, you're just like sitting on seats playing acoustic. It, it was, was it uh, when, was it right before 13 came out, John? Was it like, cause I remember like, I think we got a, we, we got a cassette, right? Yeah. We got a cassette of the album at the show. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is go a little bit more in detail about their work and how it's impacted our ears and our musical experiences. So I've asked John and Katie to come up with not one, not two, not three, but seven songs that directly tie to the wording and phrasing that would come up with this event. Everything flows. And uh, these are subjective picks, of course, but hopefully our selections will give you a better understanding how they um, warmed our ears and underscore this whole theme of this flow and energy. So, John, we're going to kick it off with you. 
Okay. What is your first pick that directly ties to everything flows? Uh, my first pick is going to be uh, Sparky's Dream off of uh, off of Grand Prix. Great pick. Why did you choose that? Uh, well, I think similar similar to the way that you feel about Star Sign, just that just that opening, just that just that that opening that opening guitar riff, and uh, and then and then how it just kicks into the song, and it's just got a it, it's just got such a great vocal melody, great great vocal melody, cool lyrics, great guitar sound. I remember because uh, I, I remember putting I remember putting on the record and really liking the first track, and then when that second track hit, when Sparky's Dream hit, it just like oh my god, that's <laughs> just a, such a great, it's a great second track on the record. Pick, Katie, what's your first pick? Um, well, I'm gonna go with what is uh, a song off what is probably my favorite teenage fan club album which is songs from northern britain so and i'm i chose i chose your pat your your love is the place where i come from nice so yes. i just uh that's probably one of my all-time favorite teenage fan club songs i love so how does that the lyrics present? i love it all so how does it tie into the spirit of flow and energy Oh, uh, well, I, it's one of those ones that kind of, um, you know, it, it, it's one of the classic teenage fan club songs that um, builds, you know, it starts out with the, the vocals and the acoustic guitar and then it, 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 it kicks in and it builds. And so um, I think that's kind of, in my mind, you know, part of the, the theme there. So I think that's a great pick and picks for, um, from the two of you. And um, for me, I'm gonna kick it off with Eternal Light off of Catholic Education. Uh, this album uh, was recorded at Pet Sounds <laughs> Studio in Glasgow. And I, to, so this album is like a cross between, you take a little bit of the Valentine's, Sonic Youth, Dinosaur Jr. and you kind of rolled into one and it's it's the early moldings and the early development of who are the, they're going to come much later. Um, I picked this song because and I'm going to talk about this more they're, the opening to this song I love their openings, their intros. I feel like there's kind of this build up waiting to just do that drop on you and i really get a sense of it when when i see them live it really comes to life and fruition and this song is just it just kind of has that that grunge appeal with the melodies that they do so well right and um it has that energy to it that i feel is uh giving us a snapshot of what they're capable of and where they're going to go much later down the road in their career. Uh, I want to read you a quote that I found and did as I was doing some homework. Um, Teenage Fan Club then was a continuation of what Raymond and I had been doing in the boy hairdressers. We'd been around a lot of people trying to record uh, deals, uh, get record deals, and we thought, that's too much like hard work. Let's just make a record. Raymond inherited a fridge and an oven, so he sold those, and we bought some studio time, then realized we had to get a band together. I think that's a perfect quote to kind of get the ball rolling with this band. And, and we just want to make music, and off we go. So, yeah, I'm picking that one. And Raymond's guitar work, exquisite. So, all right, what's your number two? Uh, my number two is uh, Into the City off of... Uh, off of shadows. Nice. And I and I believe I I believe this is another Jerry song. And I think I think a lot of my I think of my a lot of my songs on the list are 
are Jerry songs. But uh, Shadows is just like that. That whole album for me is probably it, it's one of my it's one of my favorite albums by them. And I know it's 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 interesting because it's one of the later ones. But uh, mm-hmm. I just think all the all the songs on that record are really just really strong. Really, there's a lot of really there's there's a lot of good um, back and forth of the really kind of like kind of fuzzy poppy songs, and then the more kind of introspective songs. And I think the I, I think w- w- with all their records, I think that's what makes them so strong is they're they're really balanced like that. What about you, Katie? Well, it's hard for I mean, when I put my list together, I I'll be, I put mine um, the historian in me um, put everything in chronological order. So, um, but because uh, I have a hard time ranking these things, but um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the same album that we're on because I picked a song out of that from that album too. I and I, I chose uh, "Sweet Days Waiting." Um, mm. I kind of I get I'm actually getting chills thinking about that yeah. song, but and it has not yeah not so us. not so much because it's just what that song like means to me because um, that album came out in 2010 and um, like later in 2010 and I was pregnant at the time. And um, I would get like my, uh, my kids were early, they were premature. And um, I just love the lyrics to that song. And I put, um, I put it on a, uh, I made my girls a mixed CD like for their room for when they came home from NICU and they were, um, and that song was, uh, it's one of the songs on, on the album. And um, I actually listened to it this morning because when we were prepping for this and, and I'm like, oh God, I, I, I just love, I just love the lyrics of that song. I just love the melody. It's, it's just, it's just as sweet as the words, but not, they, they do. And that's the amazing thing about Teenage Fan Club. They do sweet stuff and it's not sappy. It's actually genuine you feel it from the heart like that's that's i think one of the special things about teenage fan club so my number two pick is a little different from that tune (laughs) Uh, it's a little longer and we're gonna go with gene clark (laughs) off of 13. and uh this is the quintessential big bopping tune the the long buildup, the long intro. I always felt like this band had a kind of a, their hands in a little bit of uh, appreciation for Neil Young and uh, that big, long, drawn out intro kind of emphasizes that. And when the vocals kick in, it's like three minutes, 30 seconds. You're wondering, okay, where are they going to take this underneath this banner of noise? And this is another thing that they do so well. They create such melodic sound with kind of that noise. And uh, I love the lyrics. When the circle finally formed, you called me up. The only one making a sound. I can't work out what I want to see. I bury my thoughts in the ground. All the seeds you sow are just looking for a space to grow. All right, John. You get number three. So my uh, my third pick is also off of Shadows, and oh, it's wow. the uh, it's the it's the the first song on the record. Sometimes I don't need to believe in anything, which is one of the best song titles ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is song title alone <laughs> it is is great, but uh, that that opening uh, that opening strum and guitar is like uh, oh. it's. That that particular that that chord progression and that guitar sound are like it. It reminded me a lot of myself, <laughs> and a couple of friends even even told me when they heard that song, they said that sounds like one of your. That sounds like one of your <laughs> chord progressions. <laughs> so, nice. but uh, but uh, yeah, just everything about that song, just the just the way it starts with that really that really fast strummed electric guitar a clean electric guitar and then everything comes in and the vocals just jump right in and it's just a great just a great start of a record and then and then again the lyrics are just really great it's like it's kind of a like a dark like a darker lyrical like lyrically the songs 
dark, but it's kind of hidden under this really looks like glowing pop song. song. All right, Katie, what's your number three? I'm having a hard time looking at my list here. I'm going to go with, um, with off a of howdy. Um, I need direction. Oh, okay. We hit the um, howdy time now. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't actually, I was a little late coming to howdy and actually I remember Ross Levine, my, uh, bandmate. Um, he was just, I just remember cause we, um, we worked together at the at a record store in Sacramento called the Beat. I don't know, but and and we he was also in California Oranges with, uh, or I was in California Oranges with John and, and Ross and everybody. But um, uh, anyway, uh, he would just go off about Howdy, and he probably if he was sitting here he would just give a diatribe about Howdy. But um, it really is a brilliant <laughs> record, and and I um I need to write. It's just like, I mean. I like it's one of the things where you actually you kind of I mean they have I think Teenage Fan Club has got a lot of sixties influences and um like the like the bot like who pulls off the bop bop boss like that you know like the uh, it's just um again in it in in going into your theme like I feel like the flow of that song is like very I mean it's just so well thought out. And so, like, it's again, it's this that magical building thing that t that teenage fan club just does so well. Okay, okay. I'm gonna yeah. hop in the race car and do some vroom vroom for my number three pick. And of course, we're talking about uh, Grand Prix. Uh, this is "Don't Look Back." I know it's a fan favorite. I know when they play it live, people go nuts as well as they should have. And um, you know, this is not just Teenage Fan Club, but this is what great indie pop bands can do. They make it sound so goddamn effortless. And that outro, that 60 second outro, where they're just going off on their guitars and uh, Francis is doing his phenomenal drum work there. This is where the harmonies, melodies, this is where it all comes, you know, this perfect tapestry of rich sounds. And it just takes you on that magical ride. So I'm picking Don't Look Back from Grand Prix. It, it, it's actually what I call PPP, pure pop perfection. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> check your flag that one. That's a good one. All right, John, we're going to go to number four for you. Um, we're, going to, we're going to stay with the Grand Prix. All and, right. And, and uh, number four for me is Disco Light. Nice. And just, again, just another just, just killer, just killer track. Really, really nice, really nice intro, build up, outro. Yeah. Cool lyrics. The, yeah. the, the, the harmonies on the chorus are really great too. And just as a, just in, in Katie, you can answer this too, of course, and both of you being musicians. Um, I don't harmonize. I don't do any, I don't play any music. How hard is it to harmonize well? Takes a lot of practice. Yeah, it does take a lot of practice. <laughs> a lot of practice. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the. I mean, honestly, that's a, so. I you brief. I think I don't, did we briefly mention that John and I were in a band called Holiday Flyer together? So. Um, yes. And one yeah. one of the things. I mean, we we had harmonies like on every song, and so I think that's one of the teenage fan club. I I think as far as like. I mean. I think they're just, they're an influential band. Uh, I know for me, I think John would probably say they're influential for him as well. Um, but I feel like they were really influential in that band. Um, yeah. In the in Holiday Flyer for us. I and mean, we were, because they, their harmonies are just so amazing. Um, so. They really are. Um, You're up, Katie. 
All right. Well, my pick on this one, I'm going to go the, the Grand Prix as well. And I'm choosing mm -hmm. Mellow Doubt. Oh, yeah. So, again, it's that special sauce that they do of the uh, starting out really like sparse and then kicking in with the with the you know with the drums and stuff so i i um that's what that's just one of my favorite things that they that they do in their songwriting so um and again i just really i really like the lyrics to that song too um so that was always one of my uh favorites on that album when it when it lived in my car like i mentioned <laughs> great melody okay okay Come um, all right, so we're going to hop on the race car for me, and we're going <laughs> to we're gonna head over to Northern Britain, songs from Northern Britain. And, you know, as much as I love Start Again, and I used to have my students sing that song all the time. They would come in the morning before school starts, and we would sing songs, and that was always a, a favorite of theirs, and blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to go with Winter, that track. And, um, you know, Katie, you had mentioned that they're, they're, they're kind of steeped in that 60s melodic jangly pop sound. And it's there, and it's very present on that album for me. It's, a, it's an album of maturity in sound, maybe because where they are with their lives and getting it out of the crazy fun time and move, like settling down a bit. Uh, and I love the birds so much. Um, and that song just has phenomenal catchiness, like so many of their tunes. So, yeah, I'm picking Winter from uh, Songs from Northern Britain. And let's not forget that album was um, coming off the heels of the whole Britpop sound. And they kind of just moved themselves away from that category. And kind of just release yeah. this album. He did. It right? was a real shift. Yes, it was. Yeah. And I can see why bands may have been tempted to um, imbue some of that Brit pop qualities, but they kind of just said, "Now we'll just kind of do our own what we what we know to do." So yeah, yeah that is could... my yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go. Oh, well, I was going to say yeah. They no, could have, out of. Uh, off of off a of Grand Prix, they 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 kind of could have went two directions because they were, because the, Grand Prix has a really strong like power pop. Yeah. Uh, that like like half the songs are really power pop, and then half of the songs kind of lean lean into the leaning more into like the '60s, the '60s folk. You know, and then they even had the 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 one song Neil Neil Jung which you know was kind of leaning into the you know their their Neil Young influence but uh, yeah I, I thought it was really interesting when uh, songs from Northern Britain came out and they went really like sixties like uh, almost like that Laurel Canyon California folk you know through yeah. <laughs> through through the through the Scottish lens it's kind of that's right great connection. Okay, John, what's your next pick? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna move on to uh, we're gonna move on to man made. And I don't think anybody oh. and none of us have picked have picked a song off of man made yet. So. Uh, time stops, which is one wow. of the more which is kind of one of the more upbeat kind of fuzzy songs, fuzzy guitar songs yes. on that record. Yes. But that's uh, uh go ahead. No, oh, but yeah, yeah, I, I I just think and it and it fits it fits nice it fits nicely in between like the two kind of mellow songs that are kind of on on both on either sides of it. It's nice to have that kind of that kind of because it kind because that kind of that song kind of leans back to more like like star sign or some of those other yeah. some of some yes. of those other quick kind of fuzzy guitar pop songs. Great pick. Katie? Again, because I'm not going in any order. I also chose a song off of Man Made. Um, I chose Cells. Um, ah, I, I really why? like that. I, I, like, I, I love the lyrics to that song. 
Um, and again, it's, it's kind of, it resonates, uh, it resonates with me. Um, it's like, it sounds like it's kind of like dealing with a family member with illness. So, and John, I, again, I see music to me is, is, is personal. Even if I didn't write the song, I can, I relate to things like that. And I think that, I mean, I know when I've had feedback and somebody's told me about, you know, like you said, like, you know, I, I don't need to know exactly what the inspiration is that, that, you know, what, what is that about? I think that you, you know, for, for that, for the person who wrote it, but I mean, you always take in things and then you think it's almost like poetry, like what's your interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I just really love that song. Our, our, my, our mom had breast cancer for a long time until it finally took her. And I just remember that, that album coming out um, in 2005 and um, that, that song just really resonated with me. And so it, 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 it's a great song, but lyrically, it's it's one of the reasons that I gravitate to that song a lot. That, that's another one of their songs. I think about, like, I think the more it was interesting to me because, like, when, when I was putting this list together, I realized how how much their music has meant to me, like, in my life in general. Um, and I hadn't thought about that in a long time. So I actually really appreciate being part of this because you kind of reminded me about what actually an important band they are um, to me personally. Yeah. So for me, this next pick comes from the band, from the album Shadows, their ninth album. So I just mentioned every year that I was a teacher, my kids used to perform songs all the time to parents, to administrators, to other classes. And there was a song that came out that my female population in the classroom could not get enough of. And this was their first intro to teenage fan club music. And I'm talking about one of the most, again, PPP songs, pure pop perfection. <laughs> and this is when I still have the from shadows album. When that song starts, with Norman and those lovely pipes of his, and it just builds and builds and builds. Phenomenal harmonizing. Uh, if you were to take like a, a rock and throw it across this beautiful lake and watch it go skipping, that's that song. That's the flow, that's the energy that it brings, Hick. So All right, we got two more each. John, what is your number six? It's, uh, this is going to be our first double. And uh, going back to Grand Prix, uh, don't look back. Nice. Very nice. And yeah, I can't for... wait to hear why. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the. <laughs> A lot of a lot of the a lot of the reasons that uh, one of the reasons you had actually, but uh, one of a one of them is the is that is the, the rhythm guitar sound. It's just the perfect. It's just the perfect broken up, overdriven, crunchy, rhythm guitar, and then and then that that build the the build up and right into it, and it's got a great chorus. It's so infectious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, it's uh, when you see it played live, and particularly when all of them are just doing their own parts, but they're all coming together. Uh, it's bloody fantastic. All right, Katie, what's your number six? Well, I'm going to go back to Bandwagon-esque, and I'm actually going to, I think I already brought up the concept, but I just really love the concept. To me, that song is just like the 90s in a nutshell. <laughs> 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 so I just, I, that to me, that song is just, that's that era. I mean, it, it to me, it, it's an, it's just an iconic song. And I think it also, it's like, it's so brilliantly, brilliantly like, they're doing what they do, but you can kind of hear their influences. Like you can definitely hear Big Star on that album. Mm -hmm. um, 
you can, you know, you can hear the birds, you can hear all that stuff, but then they had their, they're, they're having their own spin on it. Um, and I just think that like, uh, the concept does, does all those things really well. And then it is regarding the theme, you know, it, it's that whole thing again, where it's, you know, starting out sparsely and then kicking in, um, in the brilliant way that they do that. So. Great pick. Holding a good, and a um, good record right there. <laughs> yeah. And, if, and if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's also a crowd pleaser, right? During their shows. People kind oh, of that's go nice. a, Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm going to thank you for that one. I'm going to go with their 10th album. It's right behind me over there. It's called Here. And this is the album where, you know, when it's wintertime, you just want to grab that really nice hoodie or a warm blanket or hot chocolate. This is that album. It's very cozy. It's intimate. It's soft. It's, it's, I feel as though they weren't, they were not trying to really push themselves sonically. Um, and just kind of wanted to slow the tempo down a bit. And uh, I'm picking the darkest part of the night um, from that album. And when you, there, it's, there's a beautiful uh, live uh, version of that song. You can find, just go to YouTube. It's gorgeous. Um, and if, so two things I learned that I didn't know about this album. Uh, I think Norman, someone related to Norman, Krista Blake did the sleeve design, which I've always liked. Kind of stared at that one. And this was Jerry's last album with the band before he left. So maybe you two already knew that. Not sure. Mm -hmm. um, but God, that song is, it just hums along so beautifully. And so, yeah, that's my number six pick. Uh, Darkest Part of the Night from the Here album. Cool. John, number seven. And, th and that was a good transition because my next pick's off of here. And it's uh, oh, nice. Air. Nice. Okay. Which is one Let's of the hear it. thin air. It's one of the, it's one of the, uh, it's one of the popular songs off the record. I think it's a Jerry. I think yep. it's a Jerry song. Yep. Dude, it's got, it's got a it's got a great so it's got a great guitar solo in it. Yeah. And 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 just and going back to our everything flows. It it. Uh, I feel like that whole record has a really nice, just flow to it. Like it like just the way it starts and everything and kind of moves through and it's got. Kind of like we talked about earlier about having the having the songs, having you know different kinds of different kinds of songs. Where, where whether it's the kind of like like the like the mellower, the mellower quiet, more introspective ones, or the or the more kind of upbeat, you know, pop gems. But it never it never cranks up the volume. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah. Even even when it's uh, even when the songs are a little more like i guess faster it, it does have that it's just got that got, has that lazy that lazy groove yeah. to it yes absolutely great pick all right katie what is your final pick well um i just really started getting into their new album the nothing lasts forever album um but i am really liking the foreign land song and um I think it's really great. And uh, I really, I'm going to, I would love their video. I love the video for that song. I don't know if you guys seen it. Mm -hmm, I have. It's pretty cool. And it's in like this old building and, and it, you know, starts out with them like going in the thing. And, but I just, I just kind of love how, um, you know, it's just that they're in their plane and it's cool. I like the feel, feel of it. I always, I just, I, again, yeah, I'm really just starting to get into this album, um, but I, I'm gravitating towards towards that song, and um, I just think it's really 
I think their career has just been like just amazing and that they, yeah, they just keep making good albums and that's impressive. And they're just, they're just not afraid to just be who they are, which, yes. um, which I, I greatly respect them for that. They're not putting on airs or anything like that. They're, they're just um, being who they are. Yeah. which is one of the things that I and love about them. That uh, Nothing Lasts Forever um, definitely has one of my top 10 songs in there. And that's uh, Back to the Light. Just a, oh God, just a sparkling, dazzling number there. Yeah. Um, great. Yep. Pick. Yeah, those actually the, the way that record, the way that record closes, Back to the Light and I Will Love You, are, uh, yeah. that's that that record ends so strong that it's like those yes. are those are, yeah. those are two of the best those, those are two of the best like closing tracks i brilliantly said and i'm glad you pointed that out okay well i had to do it i had to pick something from this album John, can you guess what is my number seven pick here? Star sign. Okay. Okay. Um, what you did to me. Oh. <laughs> oh, another one my students <laughs> loved, especially <laughs> my boys. Oh my God, they went. They did, they did this. <laughs> yeah. But uh, both I would, of you yeah. are incorrect. Both of you are wow. incorrect. All no right. prize for so us. I, no prize, but thank you for participating. <laughs> so my seventh <laughs> pick for tonight is a song that um I could listen anytime, anywhere. Um I got in a decent car accident at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And I was listening to this song when the car hit me. So oh, it has yeah. that kind of meaning for me. And also, um, the gentleman from Death Cab for Cutie. Um, huh. What's his name? I'm blanking. Ben Gibbard. Ben, yeah. Thank you, Ben Gibbard. When he did his whole bandwagon-esque album, I don't know if you've heard it, he did this version of December which is just amazing. And so if people ask me, what are some of your favorite indie pop songs? That's it. Track number three, December. And it's not the intro that gets me. It's right after the first verse. And then the drums come crashing in. And then the kick bass really kind of gives it that, that lift. So yeah, December was my number seven pick and I'm sticking to it. So John, any final words here? Oh no, I'm at a loss for words. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, I am thankful that I, I, I got to see them at the Great American Music Hall. I think it, it was on the Here Tour. It was Jerry's last tour with them. Here in the U.S., and that was a that was an amazing it was an amazing show. I was actually uh, yeah, I was actually I was actually standing next to Ben Gibbard at that at that show, and and talked to him for a little bit after the show. What he I was at that show, and he what? <laughs> yeah, he was super. He was super nice. I I I. I, I mentioned to him that I saw him at a small club in in Sacramento back in the it was it was on their first tour, and he and he told me oh because I he goes I remember that show and uh, we talked a little bit about that and it was it was cool. <laughs> what the hell were you standing? Hmm. Where were you standing? Well, if you're at the Great American, I was standing over on the left hand side, like right. Uh, like right on the right on right on the side of the stage, like you, like Raymond was like kind of right in front of me, and then and and Ben was there with his wife, 
and they were he was kind of backstage but like for the last few songs he kind of kind of stepped out into the audience and he, and he was like standing right next to me oh my goodness all right well thanks for telling me i appreciate that <laughs> katie what are your final thoughts well i'm not going to top that so <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know. Again, like I mentioned, I, I just, uh, I appreciate, you know, being part of this because it's kind of made me uh, revisit the Teenage Fan Club catalog and, um, and just be reminded of, of uh, how much I love this band. And um, like, you know, I put on the album, I'm like, I can't turn this off. Like, um, so, you know, like, and, and just, People need to revisit Howdy. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. I have i I've been I've been listening to that one and um as part of this. Um, but uh, that album is really, I mean, there's just it's so catchy. Anyway, yeah. that's I'm gonna do a plug for. Um, I guess that would be a fun question. Is in putting you know your songs together. Which album did you go back to and you're like, I need to, you know, which full album were you like that kind of resonated with you? For me, obviously, I'm, I mean, they're all resonate with me in a certain way, but um, I was, uh, my love for Howdy has increased <laughs> in this process. So maybe... Uh, John, what do you, what, what, which album did you go back to and go, wow? Uh, probably Man Made. Yeah. That's a good one. But I, but I agree with you. Um, I, I've, I've loved Howdy from, from when it first came out. I remember I, I bought it, I bought it in a, a very expensive <laughs> import version of it when it first, when it first came out. And, uh, and, and I, and I, and I didn't, and, and I had no buyer's remorse. <laughs> I, I kind of loved that yeah. album from the, I, I, I loved that album from the, from the start. I've been, in fact, I'm, I, I might've been the one that kind of pushed it on Ross. That nice. probably sounds right. Katie, that's a great question. I, I think for me um, is here. It had been a while since I listened to that from start to finish. And it just kind of, again, what I mentioned earlier, that warm embrace. It's a very feel-good album, even though obviously there's some dark underpinnings to it. But um, And kind of like the, the cover of the album, it has that beautiful flow to it. Yeah. It's very soft. And, uh, yeah, it's it's good stuff. Yeah, the painting on well, that. Well, thank you. Yeah, I love that painting. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah, um, this has been fantastic conversation. Everything flows. A tribute to Teenage Fan Club. John, Katie, thank you so much for participating and sharing your seven songs with us. And for all of you, thank you for tuning in and watching this. And feel free to put in your uh, some of your favorite tracks or albums, concert experiences, anything related to Teenage Fan Club. Uh, we have some more upcoming events if you like this one. Paying tribute to bands such as The Church from Australia. We have The Cocteau Twins, Slow Dive, and a few more. Oh, coming your way, including at the end of the year, uh, an event of the band from Leeds, England called The Wedding Present. So more details on that. My name is W, host of the High Arts on the Edge page. Thank you to our guests, John and Katie. Check them out as they are great musicians themselves from Desario and Soft Science. Talk soon. Don't forget to keep listening to Teenage Fan Club. Always a good thing. Ciao.